tonight. Another mystery solved. Less than an hour ago, we finally learned who began funding of that Trump dossier here in Washington. An amazing and maybe not surprising tale. We'll tell you in a minute. But first, the avalanche of propaganda continues here. You can tell when the Democratic Party's PR apparatus believes it has come up with an especially effective talking point, because suddenly you hear the exact same phrase from the lips of every media-savvy congressman and cable news hack on television, including on this show. The latest, you might have noticed, we certainly have, is opposition research. That's what Democrats are now calling the Trump dossier, that collection of lurid, unverified allegations that in some cases appears to have come straight from the Kremlin. Last month, Democrats told us that dossier was evidence of treason. It was grounds for impeachment. Well, now that it turns out that Hillary and the DNC paid for it, the whole thing is being written off as merely opposition research. Totally routine, no big deal, move along, nothing to see here. Come on, why are you so uptight? We've heard the story a thousand times. Right, not so fast. In fact, the Trump dossier is far from just opposition research. For almost a year, it has been the linchpin in a remarkable effort to overturn last year's election results. Information in that dossier, which in retrospect looks frankly very much like disinformation, flowed from Russia to the Hillary Clinton campaign and the headquarters of the Democratic Party. From there, it somehow made its way throughout the Obama administration to the FBI and various other law enforcement agencies and intel agencies as well. The Obama administration used the dossier's allegations to justify spying efforts against American citizens, including Trump associates. In other words, the entire investigation into Russia and Russia collusion, the one that has stalled our government and changed our foreign policy, all of it grows from the now discredited Trump dossier. It's hardly just a piece of opposition research. It's a history-changing document, and apparently a fraudulent one. So it's no wonder so many people are now lying about it. Maggie Haberman and Ken Vogel of the New York Times report that Democratic officials repeatedly lied to them for more than a year, claiming they had nothing to do with the dossier. Neither the Hillary Clinton campaign nor the DNC reported their payments to the firm that compiled it as they were required to do by law. And the lying continues to this moment. According to new reports today, both Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta and ex-DNC chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz just last month told the Senate Intel Committee behind closed doors they had no idea who funded the dossier. They didn't know of any contractual relationship between the organizations they ran and Fusion GPS, the firm that put it together. Right. Not likely, actually. The DNC and the Clinton campaign combined paid more than $9 million to the law firm Perkins Cole for legal services, and it seems likely that Fusion was receiving a lion's share of that. We can't tell you exactly how much they were receiving because Fusion GPS has resisted congressional subpoenas of its financial records. Still, it seems almost certain to be a massive payoff, multi-millions of dollars. Were Wasserman Schultz and Podesta both so detached? from the campaigns they're running in a presidential year that they had no idea where millions of dollars went? That seems absurd. Meanwhile, less than an hour ago, as we told you just at the top of this, another great mystery has been solved. The identity of the funder of the original Fusion GPS opposition research on the Trump campaign. Now, we've known for a long time it was an anti-Trump Republican. Now, according to a report by the Washington Examiner's Byron York, we know it was the Washington Free Beacon. That's a website funded by hedge fund billionaire Paul Singer and founded in part by Twitter celebrity Bill Kristol. That's where it all began. And we can promise you that not a single person in Washington is surprised by that.